Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how to use chemical tests to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. These include the use of Tollens reagent, Failing solution, and Benedict solution. In the last video, we saw that we can use the chemical 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine to test for the presence of a carbonyl compound. In the presence of either an aldehyde or a ketone, we will see a yellow-orange precipitate with 2,4-DNP. Now, there is a problem here. This reaction only tells us that we have either an aldehyde or a ketone. It does not tell us whether we have an aldehyde or whether we have a ketone. To work that out, we need to determine the melting point of the yellow-orange precipitate, and that involves a number of steps and a lot of time. However, there are several simple chemical tests that allow us to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. We're going to be looking at those tests in this video. Now, before we look at the test, I just want to remind you of one essential point. Aldehydes are easily oxidized using even weak oxidizing agents. In contrast, ketones are extremely difficult to oxidize. In order to oxidize a ketone, we would need to use a powerful oxidizing agent. The chemical tests in this video all depend on this difference. We're going to start by looking at Tollens reagent, which is also called ammoniacal silver nitrate. And the Tollens test is also called the silver mirror test. To make Tollens reagent, we take 4 cm cubed of silver nitrate solution, and we add several drops of sodium hydroxide solution. This forms a brown precipitate of silver oxide. We then add several drops of aqueous ammonia. This will cause the precipitate to form a soluble complex, producing a clear solution with no colour. This solution is Tollens reagent. Tollens reagent contains a complex of silver 1 ions Ag, and this is a weak oxidizing agent. To test for the presence of an aldehyde, we mix an equal volume of our sample chemical with Tollens reagent. We then gently warm this in a water bath at 50 degrees Celsius. If any aldehyde is present, this will be oxidized to a carboxylic acid by the silver 1 ion. In this reaction, the silver 1 ion is reduced to form metallic silver producing a silver mirror on the side of the test tube. However, Tollens reagent will produce no reaction in the presence of a ketone. OK, now another chemical test for aldehydes is called the Failings test. We start with two aqueous solutions. One is a solution of copper 2 sulfate. The other solution contains a strong alkali and the chemical tartrate. Mixing these two solutions together produces Failings reagent. To test for the presence of an aldehyde, we mix our sample chemical with an equal volume of Failings reagent. We then gently warm this in a warm water bath. If an aldehyde is present, then this will be oxidized to a carboxylic acid by the copper 2 plus ions in the Failings reagent. Now I should just point out though that because our solution is alkaline, we actually produce the negative carboxylate ion. In this reaction, the copper 2 ions are reduced to copper 1 forming a precipitate of copper 1 oxide. This precipitate is described as brick red or orange brown, depending on the specification. So the presence of a brick red or orange brown precipitate shows that we have an aldehyde. However, Failings reagent will produce no reaction in the presence of a ketone. Now another test for aldehydes is the Benedict's test. Benedict's reagent also contains copper 2 ions in an alkaline solution. To test for an aldehyde, we mix equal volumes of our sample chemical plus Benedict's reagent. We then warm the mixture in a water bath. If an aldehyde is present, the copper 2 ions will oxidize the aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. The copper 2 ions are reduced to copper 1, forming a precipitate of copper 1 oxide. And again, this precipitate has a brick red or orange brown colour. I'm showing you here a positive Benedict's test. And remember that Benedict's reagent will produce no reaction in the presence of a ketone. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe chemical tests to distinguish aldehydes and ketones. 